Audiences got more than they planned on watching this <laughs> live action yep, cartoon. I know I did, bro. Show me. Romp. God. Damn. All right, we got 10 dark cartoon theories that will ruin your time. We got 10 dark childhood theories that will ruin your childhood. All right, I want to get my childhood ruined. Let's check this out. Cartoons are perfect entertainment for growing children. With zippy music and outrageous action, they hold kids' attention and activate their imaginations. Some shows work to entertain kids and their parents by subtly adding in some very mature themes. Paying close attention to some cartoons can get dark. From a broken fairy family to bossing around babies, here are 10 dark cartoon okay. theories that will ruin your Let's childhood. Let's ruin my childhood, man. Before we begin, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification. Man, I got you. See, because like, like when they tell me to do something in the video, like... Like, I listen, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Bell for more amazing videos. You guys should do day. the same. That being said, go uh, follow the Twitch. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Let's begin. Huh? Hmm. Hmm. Number 10 Fairly Odd Parents Double Troubles. Timmy Turner is a neglected boy with a very active imagination. Uh -huh. The show centers on the misadventures of Timmy and his flying magical godparents who- Bro, I loved this show as a kid, bro. <laughs> Fairly on parents. Da, da, da. And his every wish. They gonna Cosmo ruin this for me. Wanda are loving godparents. However, their interference in Timmy's life usually goes wrong. It's not a far stretch to think that Timmy created them from his imagination because he doesn't get enough love, support, and guidance from oh, his old parents. You telling me they were fake, fake friends this whole time? Please don't tell me that. <laughs> you gonna make me cry, bro. <laughs> please, don't, please don't tell me that. But why are they so distant? Some super fans think Mr. and Mrs. Turner are wounded by a tragic past. There are subtle hints that Timmy wasn't the only child born to the family. Timmy may have had a twin sister. Here are the clues. In the episode Channel Chasers, we get a future look at Timmy's family and he's got twins. Having fraternal twins is a hereditary trait, meaning his mom could have carried twins. If you listen carefully to the dialogue, you'll notice they call Timmy uh. their only Ugh, that shit's scary. Oh, this our grim as fuck. Son, not necessarily their only child. Plus, look at how outrageously large his mom is in this flashback. There isn't a lot of material out there to cheer up bereft parents, and maybe creator Butch Hartman has used 16 seasons of the Fairly Odd Parents to help right, the people this going he cares there? about deal with loss. Number oh. nine. The they think he had a twin sister that died. Yeah, that's pretty fucked up. Rugrats are imaginary characters. Oh, nah, this don't say that. Don't say that. This makes more and more sense the longer you think about it. Rugrats centers on a group of babies that play together in their small neighborhood. We take for granted that all kinds of cartoon characters normally wouldn't talk. Animals, even cars, have personalities in the animated universe. But Rugrats is so low on cartoonish action and high on realism, it does stick out a little that the babies talk. The only huh. kids big enough to talk are Angelica and Susie. Consider this. They don't talk. They, they, they talk like kids, though. They talk like, like babies, right? I mean... Angelica, clearly a troubled child, made the babies up in her mind for someone to talk to and terrorize. How is it Phil and Lil are both identical and fraternal twins? Maybe Angelica doesn't understand the biology and just rolled with it. The Pickles, Tommy's family, is dysfunctional. The patriarch Stu compulsively builds toys in his basement, a plausible obsession for a bereft dad. Same with nah, Chucky. Nah, this one's a stretch, bruh. This one's a stretch, man. I don't know how I feel about this one. His family. Chucky's dad, Chaz, is neurotic, and we know that Chucky's mom died in a car accident. Angelica's only real friend is Susie, who maybe tolerates her out of pity. Number eight. Nah, that one's a stretch. SpongeBob's hometown is we the bomb. Three. Bikini Bottom is a tight-knit community at the bottom of the sea. It's home to SpongeBob, Patrick, and all the other crazy characters. One fan theory insists that this world is so crazy as a result of fallout from a nuclear explosion. The U.S. What? colonized a group of isolated islands in the Pacific Ocean called Bikini Atoll, anglicized to Bikini Atoll. In the 40s and 50s, the U.S. used these beautiful tropical islands to test bombs. 67 nuclear 
weapons were detonated there. The name of their town is one coincidence. In fact, the scandalous skimpy swimwear- So you're telling me these are radioactive fish? <laughs> That would make a lot of sense, actually. The bikini was named to piggyback off the controversy of the bomb testing. The other commonality supporting this fan theory is the constant explosions and the specific familiar form they take. Explosions on SpongeBob SquarePants look remarkably like the footage of the Bikini Atoll explosion. Sometimes this silly show makes such bleak points about work and life, it seems possible it could be a dark tribute. So did the radiation make all the characters so wacky? Maybe oh. the pineapple symbolizes a fallout bunker. <laughs> what do you think? Number 7. That's why Toy they can Story talk. 3 equals World War 2. Huh? Toy Story is a fun Oh, wait, 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 wait. Nah, I heard this one. I've heard this one. They talk they talk about like the third film where it's replicated like a, a training camp not a training camp but those type of camps in uh yeah world war ii is kind of it's kind of fucked up yeah light-hearted story one. about friends trapped together owned by something massive compared to their size the premise is already a little macabre before we talk about toy story 3 look back at the first two movies they take place during the space race and the changing times drive the conflict between woody and the new guy buzz lightyear in the third installment, Andy's ready to go off to college, so the toys ponder their fate. Woody rallies the group and gives a speech, which drama buffs can confirm is unusually similar to a scene in The Pianist. Oh, no, nah, don't, don't start doing movie. that. Not a coincidence. After this, Buzz suggests they go hide up in the attic, a common place for old toys, but also the famed hiding place Anne Frank and her family spent years in while hiding from persecution. The story follows a clear Holocaust allegory. The world turns its back on the toys and they're packed tightly together and carted off to a daycare. The daycare represents the concentration camps, a place where the toys are sent to uh... die. The toys are neglected, abused, and even incinerated while once broken. Eerily similar. That's dark enough, but there's a huge visual cue telling us to think deeper about what's going on. No, nah, I'm not gonna lie. You see the scene, bro, where they're in the freaking uh, incinerator. Yeah, you're not gonna tell me you didn't. You didn't almost cry. That was a sad, sad motherfucking scene, and it's very much like the 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 concentration camps in World War Two. I gonna lie. Yeah, I see it. I see it. That's crazy. These are neglected, abused, and even incinerated once broken. That's dark that's dark as fuck. There's yeah, that's a dark huge as fuck. visual cue telling us to think deeper about what's going on. There's a world map in all three movies, with the map in the third version showing some unfamiliar borders. Knowing how many people work on animated films, especially Pixar films, the inconsistencies can't be an oversight. History buffs who have pondered the changes to maps between the sequels speculate there was a world war between two and three. The similarities are too close huh? to overlook. There are guards, privileged prisoners, all the horrors. The only major difference is the happy ending. In Toy Story 3, the gang is saved by the aliens, reunited with adult Andy, and adopted by a new home. Sweet Bonus theory, ending. The ending isn't quite what it seems, and the toys didn't make it out of the incinerator. Maybe they oh, perish, fuck. have one last spiritual encounter with Andy, and enter toy heaven. Oh, Number nah, don't, six, don't tell me that now. Ed, Ed, and Eddie, <laughs> don't tell me that. Forever. Ed, Ed, and Eddie, along with the rest of their gang, explore every square inch of Peach Creek. Just some carefree friends playing for a seemingly endless summer. Yo, who watched Ed, Ed, and Eddie in chat, man? Any of you guys, like, I'm just curious, man, because that was a... That was a fire show. Or lost souls thrown together to not quite suffer for eternity. You'll oh, have yeah. To watch an episode oh, yeah. To okay. Okay, chat. Less than perfect lives Turn up. Home. But maybe there's deeper We got some people in here that actually experienced this uh, might be dead S tier cartoon. Let's think about the evidence. Hold what? on. Wait, what? Dead? These motherfuckers dead? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I refuse to believe it. But these kids have less than perfect lives at home. But maybe there's deeper symbolism at play with this show. They might be dead in purgatory. Let's think about the evidence. Why are all of the main characters' tongues dark? Maybe it's not from candy dye, but hey, the pallor of death. The show never leaves the cul-de-sac and the- Or maybe they, they just nasty niggas, bro. <laughs> like, they just didn't brush their teeth. Look at them, bro. 
Does this nigga look like he takes a bath or br brushes his teeth? I don't think so. Summer vacation never ends, not even at the end of the seasons. Somehow, these kids seem to be from different eras. Ed is reclusive and loves monster movies, a total 50s kid. Now for the second Ed, Double D. He's plagued by endless post-it notes with chores to do from his parents. Not quite a torture, but not exactly paradise since he's never thanked by them. He never removes his hat. Could he have suffered a horrible accident or died after unsuccessful chemotherapy treatment for his cancer made him bald? Or he has a, f <laughs> a fucked up trim. <laughs> <laughs> they might have a fucked up cut, bro. I've never seen his cut. His barber might have just done him dirty, man. Or he has a messed up hairline. He loves technology. A total 80s kid. Eddie's brother tormented him, we find out at the end of the series. The only time they leave Peach Creek is the only time we meet him. Could this be that they left Purgatory to visit Hell? Number five. I lie, you don't need to make a dark dirty from Eddie and Eddie, man. That show was already motherfucking weird as fuck, bro. Maybe had nightmares and shit. It was just weird as shit, bro. Number four. Who framed Roger Rabbit is oh, historically accurate. Kinda. Audiences got more than they planned on watching this <clears throat> live action yep, cartoon. I know I did, bro. Show me. God. Damn. About clear right, in the name of a lovable misfit, it's a cartoon, bro. Wake up, it's a cartoon. Institutionalized racism. The parallels between Toontown and America's dark segregationist history are undeniable. When you watch Who Framed Roger Rabbit as a child, it hurts to see humans hate cartoons. Toons, they call them, and you understand. Oh, wait, yeah, that shit is kind of racist. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> And that's a slur. Judge Doom executes cartoons at will. Older kids might understand that's lynching. Watch as an adult and you understand the whole premise is about systemic racism. Judge Doom has nobody oh. stopping him from dissolving guilty tunes in his dip. And his plan to dismantle oh. the tunes trolley to build a highway for rich people is the pure lawful evil you can read about in human news today. Even our human protagonist. Nah, 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 this nigga making me. Yo, he making me deep this movie, bro. Oh, nah, he really. Oh, he ruined my childhood. Nah, 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 I can't watch this movie the same anymore. Oh, damn. Eddie wants to believe that the residents of Toontown he's friends with, like Roger, are some of the good ones. The fact that Eddie struggles with his unnatural attraction to Jessica Rabbit makes this theory hit you like a pie in the face. Number who, who three. Who wouldn't be, though? Damn. Hey, Arnold is a show about Helga. This one doesn't take much evidence hey, to make Arnold. consider it could be true. As kids in the 90s, we took for granted Arnold being the protagonist. His name is in the title. But who is actually saying that? It's always Helga. At first, Helga is the villain of the show, always <laughs> bullying Arnold and calling him football. Oh, yeah, Her girl. unrequited love is the main constant throughout the show. Most shows with bullies rarely, if ever, show their home life and explain why they're bullies. Nelson from The Simpsons has a neglectful family. Roger from Doug has a neglectful family. The Fonz, say it with me, had a neglectful family. It's a repeated trope that her father calls her only the girl, and both favor her big sister, Olga. For just a bully, that's a lot of backstory. It's unhealthy to teach kids that when someone's mean to them, it's because they like you. This cartoon takes this idea on directly. Eventually, Helga did confess her true, intense, poorly directed feelings for Arnold. She was just love sick, man. Zazu is a traitor. Huh? If the line, I've never seen a kind of beast with quite so little hair, is hinting at anything, along with a lot of Zazu's lines in not just the, oh, the I bird? just can't wait to be king number, but the entire film, it's that Zazu really does not like the idea of Simba being king. The most noteworthy line is, if this is where the monarchy is headed, count me out. I won't hang about. Man, this was just a hater from the start, bro. Hater all the show. It seems pretty clear hater, that Zazu would hater from willingly the start. rebel against Simba if Simba were declared king. Because of this, some fans think Zazu may have worked with Scar, communicating off screen, and helped him pull off his plan to dispose of Mufasa and drive Simba. Simba out. Adding to the theory is that when Nala and Simba enter the elephant graveyard, Zazu comes to find them, but Scar was the only other one who knew where they would be. Number one, oh, Inspector yeah, uh, Gadget yeah, uh, is a replacement yeah. for a deceased man. Huh? Some people think Inspector Gadget is more than just a- Yo, key. this cartoon here like, mother bro, Inspector Gadget. This is before a lot of you guys' time. It's even a little bit before my time, I can't lie, but I still watched it, bro. Like, I still, I got the tape, man. Like, I still watched that shit. Inspector Gadget, 
My parents put me on. Cool robot policeman. Some people think he's actually the second inspector. These theorists believe Inspector Gadget was built as a robotic replacement for a human inspector who lost his life on the job. But here's where things get more interesting. The original inspector did not lose his life. He went missing. And upon finally returning home, horribly disfigured from the ordeals he experienced, he sees a robot living his life uh, and snaps. He what the fuck? What is that? Uh, uh, uh. Alright, yeah, we're ending this video right here. Okay, yeah, that's it. Yeah, we're out, we're out. Ah, 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 damn. Okay. Um, WV, 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 WV,